Okay, hi everybody. It's Kristen again, and we're here for the second episode, I guess, of my pregnancy vlog. Again, I'm at my mother-in-law's house. It's a little earlier today because I'm doing this right after I got here, um, and I'm a little tired. So, anyways, but I'm I'm excited to be here. I remembered to put the phone in landscape mode this week, but it's harder to hold, so I'm probably going to have to figure out a little tripod or something for future weeks, but this week I'll just hold it. Anyways, there were a few things that I wanted to talk about this week, so I'm going to try and remember everything that I wanted to cover. But first I thought um, I would say, so I'm six weeks pregnant today, which is kind of exciting since I found out when I was like three and a half weeks, which means we've known a couple of weeks and it makes it feel a little more real, I guess. Because, you know, those the really, really early days is, you know, there's just, I don't know, I've missed a period, of, a week past a period, and it's definitely feeling more real. Um, also, I, um, I haven't had any more spotting, so that's a good thing. I'm feeling pretty confident at this point that it was just like a weird one-time thing. And... Things seem to be really good. Obviously, can't you know? I'm not going to go get an ultrasound done or anything, so can't really see what's going on with baby, and it's too early to hear a heartbeat. But I'm just trusting that everything's going well with the baby. One of the things that I'm enjoying is visualizing what the baby looks like. Studying midwifery, I have to study quite a bit of embryology, and I like just picturing where the baby's at in development in my mind. I've done a couple of drawings of my own, which I might share some, uh, but that's a lot of fun. And so that's, I think, the primary way that I'm bonding with the baby. I'm trying to make sure that I think about the baby at least every day. One of the things that's hard, especially in a pregnancy where this is not your first pregnancy, uh, or if you're working during pregnancy or something, it's just hard sometimes to take time and focus on the baby. So I'm trying to make time to be intentional about that every day and just think about the baby or um, sing a song to the baby or something like that. So anyways, um, so let's talk about pregnancy symptoms because I'm, I'm definitely having some of those this week. So I'm still, last week I said that I was having a little bit of trouble with constipation and that's still frustratingly there. Uh, I'm thinking I need to start doing like a cup of magnesium tea in the evenings. I'm going to try and make that happen this week, and I'll let you know next week if that seems to work. But it's definitely an issue, and it's driving me nuts, actually. So anyways, that's definitely still there. And then otherwise, I, I think I've got, you know, I definitely have a little bit of bloating going on this week. It's not like showing. It's definitely bloating, which is... No fun, but it's not uncomfortable, really, so that's okay. You know, it's just there. <laughs> it's just poofiness, um, but no, like, discomfort, which is good, because I know sometimes it's dis it get there's discomfort for ladies when there's bloating. But for me, it's just puffiness. Um, let's see. I have had a couple of hints of that metallic taste in my mouth, but it hasn't persisted. I've also had a couple of hints of nausea. Again, that hasn't persisted. I'm hoping that it won't, trying to take my probiotics and everything like that to make sure that that doesn't, doesn't happen. Um, otherwise, the other big thing that hit this week is fatigue. And so it's Sunday morning right now, and that hit Thursday morning. I could hardly drag myself out of bed, and all day I felt exhausted. Um, it really threw the rest of my week through a loop last week, actually, because it, it stuck around. So I think I'm just going to have to adjust to it. I will try and do some things, you know, to relieve the fatigue, and I'll talk about that. I'm actually planning to do an article for NBBC on it. But I'm also trying to honor what it means, which is I find it interesting because I was thinking about it last week. The baby's heart started beating last week, which is pretty cool. And the fatigue also hit last week, so that was just, I don't know if there's any correlation there, but that was interesting to think about developmentally. The heart would start beating, and then really things are starting to pick up developmental-wise, and then I start feeling really fatigued. So I'm trying to honor that because my body is doing a lot, even if nobody else can tell. So, like, on Saturday mornings is Shabbat for us, and so... I slept until like 9, and I usually I get up at 5, so that was seriously sleeping in. Um, 
And then this morning I slept until 8 and I, I had to get up because I wanted to get here in a timely fashion. But, uh, you know, on the weekends is the, really the only time I have the luxury of sleeping in. Though I can try and fit a nap in on weekend afternoons. But, uh, but I was definitely going to do that. You know, I was going to honor that need. And like yesterday afternoon I took a, a long bath and then I also had a nap. Actually, it wasn't in that order. I had the nap and then took a long bath just trying to honor that need for rest and especially because um, the Sabbath day or Shabbos is supposed to be a day when you rest. I figured I should rest. Um, this week is going to be hectic. The next two weeks I think are going to be really tough for me because the fatigue has already kicked in and I'm actually flying to visit my parents. My mom had a stroke last year and she's doing a lot better now but you know still a lot going on so I'm flying to my see my parents on Thursday um, but I've got a really busy week ahead of that. Sadie turns two on Wednesday. There's a peer review for all the midwifery practices in my region tomorrow. That's going to be a day long thing. And then Sadie's birthday is on Wednesday. And I'm also supposed to do prenatal clinic that afternoon. And then flying on Thursday, a really long flight. Um, I don't mind layovers so much because I always have something to keep me busy. I'm hoping I can get some articles written for the site during layovers, but it's still going to be a long day. And then I'm actually flying in um, to an airport two hours north of my parents, so I'm going to have a drive after that. Though fortunately my cousin lives in the city I'm flying into, so I have two cousins living there. So one cousin's going to take me to my dad's and then... Um, and then the other cousin will bring me back the week after. So that's nice. But it's going to be a long day. And then on Friday, I'm going with my dad to meet with a financial planner just to help sort out his and mom's finances. And then Saturday, I'll be with mom. Sunday, I'll be with mom. She's in a nursing home right now. We're hoping that we can see her come home very soon. But right now, she's in a nursing home just in their like long-term rehab unit. And... Um, and so I'll be, I'll stay there with her um, Saturday and Sunday just to be there with her and to help her. She's got some really specific goals and things that she's working on to try and get ready to come home. So I'm going to help her with those things, like just kind of thinking through logistics and motivating her. And then, um, and then Monday we'll be back with my dad um, and I'll hopefully teach classes on Monday, but then Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday shouldn't be too bad. Tuesday I'll fly home, but my flight leaves a little bit later. Hopefully, again, I can get some riding. The hard part's going to be the flight gets in really late at like 10 p.m., and then the airport that I'm flying out of is two hours south of my house, so then that'll be two hours to get home, so Scott and I will get home about midnight, and then the next day... <laughs> is clinic day so I have prenatals and I've got a mom who has a home visit so I have to go and then on Thursday another home visit in the morning and an appointment for me in the afternoon which will be crazy anyways I'll tell you all about all of that as it happens but it's gonna be tiring I'll tell you how the flight goes next Sunday hopefully I'll be able to take a few minutes to do another vlog um, because this will be the I flew when pregnant with my very first but I haven't since then um, I'm planning to opt out of the the screening and I'll let you know how that goes. I've got a lot of friends who have opted out and said that it went really well. Um, when I flew to go see mom, I was just so flustered and everything right after her stroke that I just went through the scanner, but I wasn't pregnant then either. So, uh, so we'll see how that goes and I'll let you know. Um, I'm not too worried about the flight itself since the baby's so small. My preference would be not to fly while pregnant, but this trip was scheduled before I knew I was pregnant. So, um, anyways, or knew I would be pregnant. So, and it needs, I need to go see my folks because I haven't been there since August. So, anyways, I'll let you know how all that goes. But, so that's, I guess those are the real big updates. The other things I, that I wanted to talk about were, I did do a pregnancy test at like a week late, and I was thinking that I would show you that because the... It was encouraging to me because the test line's like actually a little bit um, darker than the than the other line. Let me see if I can make this. I don't know if I can make this flip around. Well, I'll show it to you up here. That's. I thought there was a way to make it flip, but I guess there's not. So here's the test. As you can see, I, the two two there. I know it's a little bit backwards. Hard to read. Anyways. Yeah, it's just going to be backwards because of the camera. 
But the 2 2 there is because it was 22 days post ovulation. So one week and one day late. And the T line there is the test line. And then the C is the control. And like the test line's actually a little bit darker than the control line, so that made me feel good. So that was that's cool. Um, I'm going to do like, I'll show you all the tests that I've done in another video that will actually probably go before this video and last week's video when I put up the vlog sequence because we still haven't told anybody yet. I am thinking I want to tell my parents when I'm down there um, so we will tell the kids and just make a public announcement soon because I I don't know, I just don't feel like waiting this time around for a long time and I want to be able to get the vlog up and everything else. But the other thing is I got... And I'll show you this. This is something I've wanted to get like with all my babies and I haven't been able to. So this is something that I got. I'm not going to wear it yet because well, well, I'll wait till I tell the kids and then I'll probably start wearing it. But it's just one of those little chimes that that rings or holds down near the belly. So it's really long. That's my mother-in-law's dog. She apparently doesn't like it. Um, but it's really pretty. It's got a little green green chime in there, and I like that. Um, so I'm excited about being able to wear that too. It's just, I don't know, I think it's just like fluff. <laughs> fluff for the pregnant mom, but I like it. I've always liked the thought of that little chime, chiming near the baby. Again, apparently it offended Safi. Anyways, um, also the other thing that I wanted to talk about was food because I get a lot, a lot, a lot of questions about pregnancy diet and especially early pregnancy diet. So I thought this would be a good time to talk about that um, if Safi will hush. But anyways, so I, I am to say that I am a big supporter or proponent of the Brewer diet would probably be an understatement. I definitely believe that the Brewer diet is an excellent choice for pregnant women for many reasons. When done right, remember it's not all protein and I've written tons about that. And if you're interested in that, um, I can put some links on the page where I post this vlog. But anyways, um, a lot of people ask me like, when should you do the Brewer diet or when should you start? And really the Brewer diet, its primary function is to support blood volume expansion in pregnancy, which begins at eight weeks and peaks at around 28 to 32 weeks. So it starts at eight weeks. So I'm only six weeks now. So it really hasn't even started for me yet. Um, and so the, the, but the point is, is that you don't need to eat like the calorie level and the quantity of food in the brewer diet until that blood volume expansion begins. And really you have some time to build up with it. So what I usually recommend is that by like 16 to 20 weeks, you've hit the full brewer diet. In early pregnancy, though, there is a lot going on. I mean, like, developmentally, like, all of the baby systems are forming and developing. So it's, I think it's a really crucial time as well. But, like, calorie-wise and quantity of food-wise, it's, it's not quite so crucial. Um, but nutrient density-wise, it, it is. So you want to try and eat as well as possible. And so what I've been doing... I definitely haven't really felt the need for extra food right now very much, Some like an afternoon snack here and there, uh, but not. I don't need a morning snack yet. Um, if I have morning sickness, I usually eat like a really early morning snack, but I haven't had any enough to need that yet. So I've just been trying to make sure that I've been eating really well. I have paid more attention to food quality than I was when I wasn't pregnant, which is you know, I should always, but sometimes life gets busy. But I've just been making sure I've been, I, skipping breakfast was probably the biggest thing that I would do that wasn't really good for me. I had already started working on not skipping breakfast before I fell pregnant. And since I've been pregnant, I've been making sure to eat breakfast every morning. Um, and, you know, I've been making sure to eat a good quality lunch and a good quality dinner. There's still been a couple nights where we've done just a quick dinner that was a little more, you know, quick food, not as nutrient dense, but I've really been trying. So I've been trying to make sure that I honor eating really healthy, nutrient dense foods, not like grab and go junk or anything like that. Um, the junkiest that we've gotten is like pasta. So... Um, otherwise I haven't really had a lot of cravings, so, or aversions, so that's made it pretty easy just to eat and just to make sure that I eat well, uh, to listen to my body when it's full or when it's still hungry 
and it's gone pretty smoothly so far. I'm hoping that it will continue to go smoothly. I'm a little worried about the flight and and traveling and everything just because, especially with long layovers and airport food is really expensive. So I'm probably going to try and pack something. I haven't decided what yet um, just to have with me to eat. <laughs> but I might get string cheeses and stuff, but I'll probably want something more substantial but anyways, you know, I, I'm not sure how I'll handle all of that. But so far, eating has gone pretty well, and I've just focused on quality rather than quantity. And I'll start building up and let you know, you know, what that looks like as it, as it happens. But otherwise, it, I think it's just eating well. And if you're struggling with morning sickness, you want to try and find nutrient-dense foods that sound appealing. So I don't know what that what that would be for you because really it's very different for everybody. But that's the kind of thing is if and if it's the same thing, like if you're eating the same thing day in, day out, but it's good nourishing food, then that's probably OK. I mean, remember that past cultures didn't have a lot of variety, but they were still able to grow robustly healthy babies. So that's the kind of thing that you want to look at. So I think that's pretty much what I wanted to cover this week. And we're getting to 16 minutes here. So I guess I will show like show you my belly and then um and then that'll be it for this week. So again, um, a little bit of bloating this week. Again, I'm wearing sweatpants because it's really cold. <laughs> but um, but I'll show you my belly and show you. Not a lot of belly there. There's the belly. And there's like, so I'm kind of tightening my abs a little bit right now. If I were to let them go, there's a little bit more. Definitely still some mama padding, but a little bit of bloating like here, but not a ton. Definitely like not looking anything more than just have had a lot of kids yet. I mean, I could like, you know, push everything out and try and look pregnant, but I think I'll take secret for right now. So that's what's, you know, that's what's going on. And like as far as belly wise. So for now, I will talk to you next week, and I hope that you have a blessed week, uh, and I'll be excited to talk to you then.